A sex scandal that rocked the San Francisco Police Department is making headlines once again. You may remember the story of a woman who goes by the name Celeste Guap. The ABC 7 News I team has been covering the story extensively since 2016 after learning she allegedly had sex with at least 29 Bay Area police officers, many of those when she was underage. Now, our media partner at the San Francisco Standard, they've learned at least one SFPD officer named in that case is still making his full salary. He's been relegated to desk duty at SFPD's Department Operations Center. You can read more about the center in this article on the Standards website. It's part of their investigative series that aims to hold the department accountable. Joining us live now to tell us more about it is Michael Barba, a senior reporter for the Standard. Michael, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. So the Celeste Guap case was certainly a bombshell for the department and also other Bay Area police agencies. Officer Roger Ponce de Leon, what's happened to him? Uh, he remains on the job collecting what most would consider a high salary? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, back when this scandal broke, I think a lot of the attention was focused on the East Bay Police Departments, but the San Francisco Police Department also had um, several officers who were alleged to have had sex with um, the teenager. And Roger Ponce de Leon was one of them. He was named at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but the public really didn't know much about the allegation. So we actually went to court to get search warrants unsealed and uh, found out that the teenager had said she had sex with him on three different occasions uh, and used drugs with him, including in public. Um, so ever since this happened about uh, six years ago, she, she told the police department about this. Ponce de Leon has been on desk duty at this unit called the Department Operations Center, making, uh, I think, his salary peaked at $240,000, including benefits in 2020. I mean, does the investigation into him continue? Um, you know, the investigation closed. I, I believe they had some some legal challenges when it came to imposing discipline. Um, my understanding is that this spring he reached a settlement agreement with the department and was ultimately uh, suspended after, you know, six years of this case dragging on. I see. But he had been working or has been working at the Department of Operations Center, which in your article, the headline calls it the windowless room where SF stashes troubled cops. Uh, many people don't even know about its existence. So tell us what it is. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, I think a lot of people who, who know about policing even didn't know that there was this one unit in particular where the department stashes officers. So this is kind of a, a nerve center for the police department where they share information throughout. You know, the officers there sit behind desks. They have the news on um, on a big wall of televisions. And, um, you know, they're just sending email or answering phones, distributing bulletins. And it's really desk duty. It's it's work that I'm told could largely be done by civilians, um, but is really being done by uh, many officers who have been accused of wrongdoing and who the chief wants to uh, keep away from the public, basically. So it is a mix, though. There's some officers who are there because they chose to be there. There's some who are injured. But then this is also a place where it's kind of a, a who's who of people who've gotten in trouble have been sent there over the years. I see. How many officers would you say are at the center? Like, as you said, right, they're making more than civilians would doing that same work. Um, you know, there's something like, uh, uh, I believe you asked me how many are, are there. I think there are 25 officers who are there in a recent month and uh, something like half of them were, were um, sent there by chief's order which I can't tell you for certain it means they got into trouble, mm. um, but that is typically the belief. It's an indicator that you know someone who's sent to a unit like the operations center by chief's order um, got into some sort of trouble. I see, all right, you published part of an interview as well with a police officer who actually spent time there. He was transferred there after he was accused of hitting his wife. Let's listen to part of what he said. I was there for I think almost 10 months. You're sitting in a cesspool of people who are just you know, we're all wallowing and there's no windows, no doors, it's just four walls with the computer screens and you're just, you're enveloped in yourself. There's no windows? No, not inside the operation center itself, there's no windows. 
I mean, it certainly sounds like a depressing place, but other people will point to, hey, at least you're still making a salary. And, and I guess the question is, some people may wonder, what's the point, right? Why not just clear them out, put them back on the streets, or remove them from the force? Well, I think the answer is that it's it's really hard to impose discipline against a police officer. Uh, in California, officers enjoy extraordinary protections under the law. The Peace Officers Bill of Rights um, lays out a bunch of, of restrictions, basically, um, on imposing discipline. Officers are, you know, investigations have to be completed within a year. They have a right to an appeal. And if the department doesn't abide by those rules, uh, to the T, then the police union or the officers can sue and cases drag on. And um, as we saw in the case of, of Ponce de Leon, sometimes they're there for as many as, as six years. Mm -hmm. um, so some officers are in and out, like the one you played the clip of, Darius Jones. He was there for, for 10 months, um, but that's not always the case. Look, uh, we're almost out of time, but I just have to ask you, did the chief respond? Obviously, SFPD is shorthanded and, you know, using some officers in this way while trying to keep the city safe, short staffed. Um, there are a lot of questions there. Yeah, I mean, the chief acknowledged yesterday at the police commission, he said that, you know, he said that he does send some officers there uh, who get into trouble. He, he acknowledged doing that at least. At the same time, he gave a somewhat contradictory response where he said the department doesn't have rubber rooms. Um, and as, as I discussed in my series, I mean, what the police department has with this unit is, is essentially a, a rubber room like the ones New York City schools are notorious for having or were notorious for having where, you know, teachers who couldn't be fired were, were kept uh, away from children in a, in a room.